Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. This is Bucket Ponds, and my name is Terry. I seek to uh, enlighten, entertain, and encourage you to start your own projects. Uh, today I have for you a very special video. I'm starting a whole new series, and I'm going to show you how to raise detritus worms in a live culture. This is like a community culture, a invertebrate tank. Um, it's going to be a lot of different animals together, uh, forming, uh, forming an ecosystem, and uh, thriving. And growing in vast numbers, so I think you'll like it. Now I noticed over time that when working with these worms it helped to have hard water. So we will be looking for, uh, you know, elements that add uh, hardness to our water. But we'll talk about that in a moment. This will of course be a Wallstad style aquarium. Uh, but I'm not going very deep with the soil layer, I'm just going to add a small amount of soil. This is actually all natural compost. Now you may notice, uh, unfortunately, the tank does have a couple small scratches, but I'm not going to even worry about it. Uh, you know, nothing, no tank is perfect, and uh, trying to achieve perfection is a wasted effort. So of course we have our small amount of compost, uh, with a slight incline towards the back. I'm not going to do too much aquascaping in this project, because it's just not necessary. Uh, but this compost will add nutrients for our plants, and it'll also allow the worms a place to burrow which seems to be important to them. We have several different species of worms here at the Bucket Ponds, and uh, all of them aquatic, of course. Here I am using some sand uh, to prevent that uh, compost from floating to the surface. This is standard Wallstad style method. And uh, my sand is actually river silt. Yes, it's very fertile, and it's very clean, and works great for these projects. Now I know what you're saying, you know, we're going to have a massive algae bloom in here, and that's okay. We're prepared for it, and we're going to actually seed this with our very own macroalgae. That, uh, once again, I assume to be one of the very few people that raise Nutella, Charcea, macroalgae. And, uh, you know, I don't mean to brag, but I think that's pretty cool. If you get into these projects, you may find some certain plant that works well with your systems. And uh, you might become, you know, someone... Uh, you know, very few people who raise that particular plant or algae. They're all valuable and useful and fun to learn about in one way or another. So there we have it. There's our decent looking sand layer. I'll add just a little bit more to help bolster it. You want to make sure that your sand layer is deep enough to prevent the compost from floating to the surface. And uh, you want to make sure that you don't blow it away when you uh, add water to the tank, which is very, very important. That happens all the time. Now I'm going to save a little bit of sand as well for our Nutella when we add that. And now we're going to add some of our Nutella Charcea macroalgae. There are several names for the Chara family of macroalgae. Uh, but this particular variety is actually Nutella. And I grow it in my farm aquarium, some of my ponds outdoors, and some other places. I found it growing here locally, so it's not invasive. It's, it's naturally meant to be here. We have, of course, tons of snails and things in here as well. Pond snails and bladder snails, uh, hydra, paramecia, our detritus worms, um, all sorts of things. Um, I probably could not name them all. It would be a waste of your time, so just consider this a massive pile of microorganisms. So we're just going to add a healthy amount of our chara in here, or of our Nutella, actually. It is in the chara family, but it is not actually chara. Chara is uh, called stonewort, and that's a whole different plant, though they are related. Chara is known for its uh, horrible stench, <laughs> whereas my Nutella smells, hmm, smells like a, a delicious herb or something you might cook with. All right, now we're going to add some small stones to help cap or to just pin the Nutella to the bottom and to encourage it to uh, develop some holdfasts. Macroalgae does not have roots, but it will uh, form a holdfast, which is kind of like a root. We're going to move our container out of the way. And here we're using, there might be some algae stuck to my fingers, uh, and you have to just forgive me for that. Uh, but here we're using marble chunks. In the original tank, I used several marble chunks. And uh, these have been cycling in my pond for a long time, so they're covered with beneficial bacteria to help speed the process in this tank, as is the Nutella itself. 
So we're doing like an instant cycle for this project. Uh, but these will slowly leach into the aquarium and increase the hardness of the water. And we're just going to put them kind of like right there. This will in fact be our shield to prevent the water from eroding the sand layer while also pinning some of the Nutella. It's going to float when we add water. Now, here in our culture aquarium, we have a number of planaria, hydra, green hydra, uh, bladder snails, pond snails, all of our fun stuff. This is my little capture tank um, from when, you know, I just collected this from my farm aquarium. Oop. We don't want to lose any of this water. But these creatures are all very valuable and we want to include all of them in the tank. So the next step is to, of course, add water. Now, if you're doing this for the first time yourself, you're going to want to use some pond water or aquarium water. Odds are you have these worms in your aquariums already. So you shouldn't have to go through too many hoops to, uh, gee, you know, just capture some from the substrate layer in your tank. Uh, but if you don't, then I would suggest, you know, going to a local pond and just taking a scoop, kind of like this, from one of my ponds outdoors. And, you know, these have been running for several years, so there's quite a few creatures in here. And we're just going to start that off by adding a fair amount of water. And there's a little bit of sand and stuff in here as well. We're just going to kind of sprinkle some of these pebbles in the back. Oop. We may have uh, inadvertently buried a snail. <laughs> And that's okay, it's going to happen. We actually have a bladder snail snuck on our hand here. And uh, they're totally harmless, you guys. I'm aware that, you know, snails carry parasites and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but I've never had any issues. I've been keeping these snails for years. I've been breeding them. This little guy right here was born and bred under my careful eye. And I love them to death. They're my little friends. So we've added a little bit of water and some Nutella. Now we're going to add water samples from my other ponds, my other aquariums. Um, these are all very different water sources. This is from my guppy pond, or my uh, guppy aquarium. My Endler guppy hybrids, which you may have seen on the channel here and there. And uh, we're just going to add this stuff in there. There's a bit of mold in here, which is important. Those worms will consume mold. That's part of their food source. They eat bacteria mainly. And bacteria grow on mold. I am one of the keepers that believes that a mulm layer is completely healthy and natural for tank, and nothing to be afraid of. If you disagree, you know, that's fine. That looks a bit messy right now, and that's fine. The Nutella will spring back, it will begin to float, and uh, we don't have much to worry about here. This Nutella is very, very durable once it gets established in a tank, and uh, it should take in here as well. Now we're going to add some samples from our other projects. We have here some water samples taken from my farm tank. My farm aquarium is a large 30 gallon aquarium which grows Nutella and all of my tiny creatures in a vast culture. And I don't like showing it too much on the channel because it's, you know, it's somewhat dirty. It's a pond in a big aquarium and, you know, people will mock me and talk a bunch of crap so we don't want to do that. Uh, but now we're going to go ahead and add our Nutella or our, add our farm tank water samples. You might even see a little piece of fish food in there, and that's fine. So now we're gonna add some more water and a little bit of mold. And I just wanna show you a good look at the, uh, the Nutella itself. It's very stringy and fragile. It's also loaded with snail eggs, of course. I raise many, many snails. And if you look closely, you'll even see some planaria in here, some flatworms, and some other things, and that's totally fine. All right, so the tank still looks a little murky, but, uh, you know, that's fine. This is natural. It's going to be a little murky as we start. Uh, but the Nutella works kind of like a large filter, and it's going to basically grab up all the little particles in the water. So I want to free up some of that buried Nutella and make sure those snails have a chance to, uh, you know, get out of there a little bit. We don't want to lose any of our snails if we can help it. There we go. And we're going to add just a little bit more water from another one of our ponds. Like this, I want to run it not completely full because the snails will come to the surface and lay their eggs. But I want to get it pretty full. Right about there. That should be pretty good. And we have 
a few more eggs. That's an egg sack for our bladder snails. And uh, it's really cool. Those are That's basically about 20 baby bladder snails attached to this Nutella. And we're just going to just set them right in there. Hopefully they hatch and have good lives inside. I see that we have some kind of strange uh, growth that has appeared. We must have captured from somewhere. I don't quite know what that is, and I'm just going to pull it out of the tank. We'll just throw that in one of our ponds for safekeeping. Looks like a leaf or something. Sure. Now you may notice that I did not just put some clean water into a container and add detritus worms. Um, you might try that in like a scientific setting, and you know, you can adjust the parameters and try to get it just right so it'll work. Maybe you can succeed. Who knows? I, you know, best of luck to you. But in my experience, you know, these are sludge worms. They are detritus worms. They do not want clean water. It's unnatural for them. They want dirty, messy aquariums full of mold. You know, that's their bread and butter. That's where they live. And uh, you'll see them free swimming, of course. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to add them in here like this. Now, there's a good chance that we got at least a few of them. And that's all it takes to get started. I don't see any free swimming worms at the moment, but that's okay. They are very small, and, you know, we're starting from the beginning here. We're starting with a humble culture, just as if you had visited a local pond and taken a few samples yourself just to see what's in there, you know. Uh, we've set the tank up. It looks great. We've, uh, you know, we're establishing a new ecosystem here. And the ultimate goal of this aquarium is, of course, to uh, breed up detritus worms to feed our fish. We have some newly caught wild mosquito fish in another tank. And I'll show you them eventually. There's even a crayfish in there. My first crayfish in an aquarium. And I'm very, very happy about that. Uh, but I'll show that to you maybe in part two or part three of the video series here. Uh, but today, you know, we're, we're setting this up to feed them. They're wild fish. They're not used to fish flakes. They're used to catching and consuming small prey. So we're going to fix them up with that. Uh, but as it is, the tank is a little ghostly and kind of foggy inside. And that's fine. Things will settle down. And this Nutella, once it gets really rolling, it's going to consume all of the nutrients in here. There won't be anything left for other algaes to work on. Or algae, I guess I should say. Uh, but the cloudiness in the water should dissipate, and we'll have a nice, clean-looking aquarium. Uh, the Nutella kind of acts like a net or a filter in itself, and it captures all these little particles and really cleans the water up nicely. I love this Nutella macroalgae. It provides habitat for all these creatures, and you'll get a better look at it as the tank settles. So we're going to let the tank sit for a while, probably about a day. And I'll come back and feed it here soon, just to, you know, get things rolling. Uh, but you may not see the worms as of yet. Uh, just like if you had gone out and you're just getting started, you know, that's where we're starting this tank. You know, you went out, you got a sample of some pond water, you got a little mud off the bottom. And uh, now you're waiting to see what's going to show up in here. You know, what's going to start breeding and, and start growing. So we're going to let it sit for uh, about 12 hours. I'm going to come back and give them some fresh food in the form of a slice of cucumber. And uh, then we're going to let it sit for about a day. Now I do want to talk about the fact that this is an open aquarium. This is not a sealed ecosphere tank, even though I run quite a few of them. Uh, but in my open aquariums, I do feed them with cucumber slices. I like to do this because it encourages, you know, vast reproduction. Many of these small animals that live in these, you know, aquatic habitats. Ooh, we have a nice planaria right here. Uh, many of them rely directly on the amount of food available in their habitat. You know, if there's more food, they'll breed more often. And since we're trying to raise thousands of worms like we have in the past, uh, we need to provide them with a fair amount of food. Now, this is also, the one reason it's open is because I want to pull the worms out over time. I don't want to let them overpopulate and become, you know, stagnant in the water here. We want things to be a thriving ecosystem. And in an ecosystem, you know, something eats everything. So we're going to pull some of the worms out as we go, some of the paramecium, things like that. There's ostracods in here that I can already see. We have a number of our beautiful snails cruising around. And they won't waste any time when they start breeding and, and you know, living their little lives. 
that's the prime view. I believe this will be our viewing angle for this aquarium uh, as we go from now on. Well, all right, guys. Uh, this video is running a bit longer than I expected, and I've already missed my upload window by a few days. So I'm going to call this the end of part one. We've set up the tank. We have our nice Nutella and all of our pets inside, uh, though I may have to seed it with a few more detritus worms in part two. So uh, thanks for watching. This is Bucket Ponds. My name is Terry, and uh, we've set up a nice little Wallstad Nano Aquarium for our detritus worms, and uh, I hope you followed along. Maybe you built your own tank. It's pretty cool. Uh, so please like and subscribe, and I will see you in part two, which will be uploaded most likely right alongside this video.